All right, Dr. Henderson, talking about one of my favorite procedures this time, which is a sacral nerve stimulator. This is usually for my females. It tends to work better on females for overactive bladder, urge incontinence, things like that, versus my male patients who do a lot of the Botox injections into the bladder, which is just kind of paralyzing a portion of the bladder wall to calm down your bladder. I do have women that do that, but I have more success with my female patients getting this sacral nerve stimulator device than with the Botox. We usually start with that. The nice thing about this procedure is once you've gone through medications, trying to calm down your bladder to control your urination so you're not voiding all the time and potentially even leaking, having to wear pads or diapers or things like that. If you go through the medications and those fell, a lot of times we'll get you set up for urodynamics, which is a study of your bladder to kind of prove that yes, your bladder isn't working very well and it's firing off too often and, and making your life miserable. And when we do that, we can get approved by the insurance to move forward with one of these procedures. This one I'm talking about is called a sacral nerve stimulator. And we just get little leads in the back. We first try it here in the office where we put these little leads in your back right next to the nerves that innervate or stimulate your bladder. And we all have this automatic signal that's coming from our spine to our bladder muscle telling it to clamp down so that when we voluntarily from our brain tell our bladder, okay, it's time to go to the bathroom and we were trying to avoid or pee, we'll squeeze down and that muscle works. Sometimes that muscle is overstimulated from those nerves in your back. So if we can put a little lead near some of those nerves, and it just does like a pulsation and block that signal, we can calm down your bladder and you have better bladder control. The interesting thing with this as well is I don't specifically ask this all the time with my female patients or with my patients who are considering this, but it also works for stool incontinence or if you're having a bowel movement and you've noticed that you have bowel incontinence and you have to wear a diaper because all of a sudden you just had a bowel movement in your pants, those are the same nerves that innervate your bladder as they do your bowel. And so what a lot of my patients tell me after the procedure is they say, oh my goodness, this has worked. It's a 50% improvement, 70, 80, 90, whatever percent improvement for my bladder, but I don't have the bowel incontinence anymore. And it's because it's the same nerves that go to your bladder that go to your bowel. It's a very good procedure. If you do the trial run here in the office and you say, okay, I definitely got a 50, 60% improvement, we can get approval from the insurance to go and put it in the operating room. The difference between the office and the operating room is in the office, there's little leads sticking out of your back and you have some sterile dressing there. We don't wanna get it infected or anything. We tell patients you need to sponge bathe for that six or seven days that you're trying out the right side, the left side. Most patients will pick a side they felt like worked better. And then when we take you to the operating room, we do the full implant of this nerve stimulator device. That implant that we put in there is one lead in whichever side works the best for you. And then a little, looks like a pacemaker battery that we put underneath the skin. They have a rechargeable battery. If you wanted to do that, you could do that. A lot of my patients say, why would I do that? The other battery lasts for 10 to 15 years, and then you just get it changed out. I agree 100%. It's a hard sell for me to get patients to do the rechargeable battery. Once we do that surgery and get everything in, it's a really, really neat device because it has what looks like a Samsung cell phone that's the controller now, and you there's different programs or pulsations you can do to see if it helps calm down your bladder so you have better bladder control. It also can increase the intensity of the signal that it's sending. It's a fantastic procedure. I actually wish that I could offer this to my patients first before the medication because I feel like it works that much better than the medication. One other use for this is going to be urinary retention. Now the thought process behind this, how it works for that, is if you have urinary retention, your bladder isn't working as well, that it actually is stimulating the nerve and stimulating your bladder so it works more often. But I see nine times out of 10 or more, this is actually used for overactive bladder and urge incontinence. We get that control back um, in your life and you're only going to the bathroom every three or four hours is, is our goal. Other things with this, everybody talks about different companies that you can use. One is Medtronic and they have an inner stem device. They've been out on the market the longest. They really have changed their product. So all their product now is MRI compatible. Some of that came about because they had competitors come in to the market. The 
competitive one has been around the market. They do now have a battery, but they were really pushing their rechargeable battery. So we weren't using them as much. That company is called Axonix. So you can look up on the internet, Medtronic and the Interstone device, or you can look up Axonix. Axonix, the only thing they do right now is just a sacral nerve stimulator. It really doesn't matter to me which company you use, but a lot of my patients, again, prefer the longer acting battery. Axonix does have that battery now, so I'm trying to stay as unbiased as possible. <laughs> it's a great procedure. All my patients have been super happy with it. Things to expect afterwards, the little incision in your back and then the pull coal site. You don't wanna be in a hot tub, bathtub or pool for about two weeks to let those incisions heal, but you can shower right away. We'll have some surgical glue over it that'll fall off in a couple of weeks. There's not a ton of recovery after this. So it's just implanting the device. Biggest risk are infections or things like that that can happen. We are very careful with the device and using an antibiotic preventative solution and using antibiotics intraoperatively so that we really don't see infections hardly ever at all. Great device, super effective and life-changing for most of my patients. So I love doing this procedure.